us in verse 60 who is it that has created the heavens and the earth and sent down for you water from the sky and then we caused to grow in it orchards full of beauty whose trees you could never grow is there any god associated with allah in these tasks how does modern science answer these questions who is it that created the universe who answer this science gives us the big bang theory we say okay but where did those specks of energy come from that caused the big bang the answer from the scientist is we don't know at least not yet there are other like Stephen Hawkins who was a leading physicist and cosmologist and his explanation was i think the universe was spontaneously created out of nothing according to the laws of science it has no beginning and no end so basically we are being told not to believe in a god but instead we are to believe that everything came out of nothing no god no accountability no heaven or hell live your life as you please believe in our absurd theories and do not believe in a higher god how perfect clearly does allah subhanahu wa taala describe their situation in verse number 66 no their knowledge of the hereafter amounts to ignorance in fact they are in doubt about it in truth they are totally blind to it they will come a day when their deniers will see how wrong they were but then it will be too late surah al qasas let's take a look at the flow chart of the microstructure of surah al qasas which was revealed in the third phase of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's stay in makkah the central theme of this surah is a warning to all oppressed to stop spreading mischief on earth or they will face the same end as the pharaoh and the karun the sura begins with a detailed account of hazrat musa alaihi salam in verse number 4 allah subhanahu wa taala presents a chart sheet against the pharaoh what were his crimes he considered himself superior to everyone and oppressed his people like a tyrant he applied a divide and rule policy and didn't give equal rights to his people he had forced the bani israel to a life of hard labor he was guilty of ethnic cleansing killing the boys of the bani israel letting their daughters live why is the personality of the pharaoh being described in the quran because allah subhanahu wa taala wants us to take note of his characteristics as such tyrants not just existed in the past they exist in the present and such people will come in the future too in verse number 5 and 6 allah subhanahu wa taala lets us know what eventually happens to these all powerful tyrants allah subhanahu wa taala says and we intend to favor those who were held as weak in the land and to make them leaders and make them inheritors and give them power in the land and to make the pharaoh haman and their army see what they feared we see throughout history that all superpowers ultimately become weak it is allah subhanahu wa taala alone who gives power and who takes it and the pharaohs of this world should fear allah subhanahu wa taala verses 7 to 13 describe the childhood of hazrat musa alaihi salam how according to the plan of allah subhanahu wa taala baby musa was saved from the being killed by the pharaoh's men and was eventually adopted by the same man who would prove to be his biggest enemy you see as humans cannot comprehend what allah subhanahu wa taala has planned for us we cry and complain at our difficulties in life not knowing that they are in fact a blessing for us wouldn't it be great we trusted allah subhanahu wa taala the one who loves us the most verses 14 to 21 describe how hazrat musa alaihi salam becomes a young man in the house of the pharaoh he was blessed with wisdom and knowledge by allah subhanahu wa taala he was living an ideal life until an incident happened which changed everything an egyptian man was unintentionally killed by him he was told by a well wisher to leave egypt or else else he would also be killed by the egyptians this is how he left his home his family riches position and reached madian there after helping two girls water their herd for no charge he turned to a shade and prayed my lord i am truly in great need of any good that you might send down to me allah subhanahu wa taala answered his dua and moments later he was called by the father of the two girls who not only offered him a job but also a shelter and a promise of a bright future with his daughter you see allah subhanahu wa taala does answer our dua but 
sometimes they are answered in different ways. The first scenario could be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yes, like in the case of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. The second scenario is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yes, but not now. Third scenario is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I won't give you this because I have a better plan for you. So stay optimistic as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond with what is best for you. The story of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam continues and he faces the Pharaoh after receiving prophethood from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In verses 38, we see another example of the arrogance of the Pharaoh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Pharaoh declared, O chiefs, I know of no other God for you but myself. So bake bricks out of clay for me, O Haman, and build a high tower so I may look at the God of Musa, although I am sure he is a liar. Isn't the thinking of the Pharaoh very much like some people today who disbelieve because they don't see any evidence of God? What eventually happens to such people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 39 and 40, and so he and his soldiers behaved arrogantly in the land with no right, thinking they would never be returned to us. So we seized him and his soldiers, casting them into the sea. See then what was the end of the wrongdoers. Verses 47 onwards are a series of warning to the people of Makkah to take lessons from the story of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Now we come to the story of Karun. Who was Karun? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verses 76. Indeed, Karun was from the people of Musa, but he behaved arrogantly towards them. We had granted him such treasures that he even the keys would burden a group of strong men. Some of his people advised him, Do not be prideful. Surely Allah does not like the prideful. His people further advised him, Rather, seek the reward of the hereafter by means of what Allah has granted you, without forgetting your share in this world. And be good to others, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been good to you. Do not seek to spread corruption in the land, for Allah does not like the corruptors. How do you think did he respond to their advice? Like every arrogant person does. He said, I have been granted all this because of some knowledge I have. These are the characteristics of the arrogant people. They think they are superior to others and that they deserve it. Maybe because of their knowledge or wealth or talents, they forget that they have this success because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to them. Now the rest of the Bani Israel really admired Karun and his wealth and wished that they too could become like him. The knowledgeable people reminded them of the real wealth and that is the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the end of Karun? Allah ta'ala informs us in verse 81. Then we call caused the earth to swallow him up along with his home. There was no one to help him against Allah, nor could he even help himself. Karun's story teaches us to be humble. If our blessings are making us arrogant, then they will destroy us. And if we use our blessings in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they will raise us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who enjoy their blessings in a halal way and decorate their houses in Jannah with their sadaqat. Ameen. Surah Al-Ankabut. Let's take a look at the flowchart of the microstructure of Surah Al-Ankabut, which was revealed in the fifth year of prophethood in Makkah. The surah begins with a question from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alif Lam Meem. Do people think once they say we believe that they will be left without being put to test? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us very clearly again and again in the Quran that we will be tested. No one can become worthy of paradise by just saying Saying a few words, we have to prove our faith by passing these tests and trials of life. But why is it that some people are tested more than others? Hazrat Saad bin Abi Waqas also asked the same question. He said, O Messenger of Allah, which people are tested more severely? The Messenger of Allah said, They are the Prophet, then the next best, then the next best. A man is put to trial according to his religion. If he is firm in his religion, his trials will be more severe. If he is weak in his religion, he will be put to trial according to his strength in religion. The servant will continue to be put to trial until he is left walking upon earth without any sin. Then in verse 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he gains nothing by putting us through these tests. He is free from need. He instructs us to struggle in his way because this opened the way to our own progress. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of a different kind of trial in verse 8. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have commanded people to be good to their parents but do not obey them. If they strive to make you serve beside me anything of which you have no knowledge, you will all return to me and I shall inform you of what you have done. Sometimes when we are trying to follow our deen, it may happen that the ones we love the most will get in our way. Sometimes our own parents stop us from following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What should we do then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that this too is a test. We have to do the best for our parents but at the same time, if we have to make a choice between pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleasing our parents, we have to choose our rough. In verse number 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, unbelievers say to the 
the believers follow our way and we will carry the burden of your sins they say so even though they are not going to carry any part of the sins surely they are lying we are told that if anybody promises that i will get your sins forgiven then that person is certainly lying there will be no middleman on the day of judgment no one will intercede on your behalf everyone will answer for their own deeds and only the actual sinners will be punished for their sins verse number 13 tells us that there will be some people who will bear the burdens of others meaning they will get double punishment once for their own sin and once for leading others on the path of sin allah subhanahu wa taala then gives us examples in verse 14 to 40 on how the righteous before us were tested as the noah alaihi salam was tested he preached for 950 years and still most of his people disbelieved and made fun of him we can't even imagine what he must have gone through when the flood came he and the believers were saved as the ibrahim alaihi salam was tested as well his people threw him into the fire but allah subhanahu wa taala saved him as the lut alaihi salam was tested his people who publicly did acts of indecency were destroyed and allah subhanahu wa taala saved him and his family then allah subhanahu wa taala tells us that he humiliated and destroyed ad samud karun firon and haman allah subhanahu wa taala says in verse 40 and we punished each one of them for their sins some we struck with a violent storm some were overcome by a sudden blast some we made the earth swallow and some we drowned it was not allah who wronged them they wronged themselves in verse 41 allah subhanahu wa taala says that the example of those who take partners beside allah is like the example of a spider making a home what is the purpose of making a home to get comfort and protection right let's picture a spider web in the corner of your room you can easily destroy it with one swipe of your hand that's how weak it is what's the use of such a weak house all the guardians and protectors of the world combined are no match for allah subhanahu wa taala in front of him they are as weak as a spider's web with this we come to the end of our lesson let's go towards the question i'm going to ask myself today the question is how will i use my blessings to please allah subhanahu wa taala inshallah we will meet again tomorrow with the next para allah hafiz